In this video, I'm going to talk about moving the derivative inside the integral. This is actually something we used in the previous video of this playlist on quantum mechanics. You can find the link in the description below. In the previous video, we proved that normalization is preserved. And towards the end of the proof, we actually used a little trick involving a derivative. I'm going to go ahead and actually go into the details of that trick because there's a little bit of nuance. It's not just a simple uh, swapping uh, of the order of differentiation and integration. You actually have to put some thought into what you're doing. So let's go ahead and have a look at the uh, type of expression we were dealing with. So we had a total time derivative. So that's d dt. That's just your normal time derivative. And we were taking the normal time derivative of an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of the wave function's magnitude squared. So that's the probability density function. And this is with respect to dx. So this integral tells us the area underneath the probability density curve. Right? That's the thing we were trying to prove stays the same. So the area underneath the curve is not changing. Normalization is preserved with time. So you can actually see I've written explicitly that this wave function depends on x and on t. But this integral only depends on t because we're integrating with respect to x. If we integrate with respect to x and we evaluate uh, from these bounds, from minus infinity to plus infinity, that's actually going to get rid of the x. So we're just going to be left with a function of time. And it turns out this function of time is a constant. So it doesn't even depend on time. It's just a constant that we set equal to 1 at the beginning. So t equals 0, we normalize the wave function, and it stays normalized. So what did we do after we looked at this? We actually repackaged it by moving the derivative inside. But we have to be very careful, right? Because this guy actually turns into a partial derivative. So we'll go ahead and write the expression when we move it inside. So we have the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of the partial time derivative. So I'm writing a partial derivative now. And I'll explain why it has to be a partial derivative and not a total derivative. So let's write this out. And we have the same stuff over here. So this guy is actually a special case of the Leibniz rule for integration. So this is sometimes confused with the Leibniz rule for series, for alternating series. That's a different rule. It's, uh, it's got the same name of the mathematician. But this is the Leibniz rule for integration. And we're looking at a special case over here. So in this, there's, more, there's a general form, which is related to differentiating underneath the integral sign. But here what we have to do is we have to take a partial derivative because this integrand depends on x and t, whereas this integral only depends on t. So the integral is only time dependent, so we can take the total derivative. But the integrand, the thing that's inside the integral that has to be integrated, that depends on x and on t. So we have to take the partial time derivative. And we actually uh, rewrote this expression in terms of some other variables. And we found that this is equal to 0. And because this is equal to 0, we managed to conclude that this guy has to also equal 0, because these two are equivalent expressions. And if the time derivative of something is equal to 0, that means it's not changing with respect to time. Or in other words, it's a constant. So that allowed us to conclude that the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity of the probability density function dx, right? so this is the entire area under the curve, this is equal to 1. And it's equal to 1 for all time. Right? This little symbol means for all. So for all t. So from t equals 0 all the way to any arbitrary time t equals t prime. Right, so the normalization of the wave function is preserved. So this is a very important uh, little trick that we had to implement in order to make that conclusion. So hopefully this clarifies some of those final steps in that derivation. Make sure you watch some of the later videos in this playlist. We're, we're going to keep talking about uh, these related topics in quantum mechanics. You can find all of those guys in the playlist if you click over here.